In the previous video, I talked a little bit about using um, or selecting and changing laser parameters and hatching parameters. I want to talk a little bit more about that and show a little bit more on how to save parameters that you've generated. And so um, I'm going to go ahead. I've got this my icon up here, my logo, I should say, up here. I've got it separated into two elements. Um, I did that so I could uh, I could engrave the radian portion of the logo. Uh, differently than the laser systems portion. So they're, they're shown as two different colors here. And basically what it allow, would allow me to do if I were to mark this would be to uh, go ahead and uh, mark one uh, with laser parameters, the, the black or the, I should say pen one parameters, and this section down here with pen two parameters. And I've set them up, uh, set that up in a previous video. So the if I were to engrave this on stainless, the radium would come out relatively dark, and then the laser systems would come out actually relatively white on stainless uh, with the parameters I've set. And speaking of parameters, what I wanted to talk about here, here is I can save everything uh, that I've done. And uh, first of all, I can save everything by going up here and hitting save, which I should do because I've been doing some manipulation. And I'll just say training files. And so everything that I've done so far, and in the previous videos, I went ahead and I created some shapes, which are, are shown here on the screen. Um, I did some sizing, I did some filling, I created some logo, I did the same thing, I created some text, I did the same thing for that. And then I brought in my logo, a hatch filled it, I've been sizing it. So everything I'm doing, uh, if I just hit file, save, everything I've done is actually saved, all the parameters, whether it's the sizing, the hatching, the position, uh, the laser parameters, it's all saved. Now, I can go ahead and do something a little bit more. Uh, for instance, if I'm over, over here in the laser parameters, I say, I'm going to, you know, I like these parameters uh, for pen one. I know that they're dark. Uh, they'll create a dark mark on stainless, these parameters right here I'm talking about. I'm going to say add, and I'm going to say dark mark. And basically, I can call it whatever I want. I hit OK. It says, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. And then now, I'll be able to recall that, those marks, or that, uh, those parameters anytime I choose by going down here on the right, and notice now I have default and I have dark mark. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I've selected the uh, laser systems here, which is using pen 2, as we've talked about before. So I go ahead and select pen 2, and I'm going to say add, and I'm going to call, I'm going to call this white because I know that this is going to create a white mark on stainless. And so for the uh, sake of this video, I'm just going to call it white mark and hit OK. Yes. And then now, when I look at my list here, I see that I have uh, generated two different uh, sets of parameters uh, for marking uh, a dark mark and a white mark, and there's my defaults. Now, if I wanted to bring one of these in, I simply select it, I hit Call. If I were to hit Call right now, it would actually apply the dark mark parameters to this pen, I don't want to do that. Uh, because I've already saved it, I know it's in there, I can pull it up later. The other thing, again, not to forget, if I hit File Save, everything is saved, and I simply could bring in this file, I could use it as a template for another, another job. But I'm showing you the, the capabilities that the software has. Again, now, I've selected this, I go to my hatch, I have the same ability in hatching to say, oh, okay, uh, I want to save these parameters these hatch parameters, and say dark mark hatch. And now let me save it. Again, now it's added to this list here, which had some other random parameters in it uh, already. And this one, which I've been talking about as my white parameters, I'm going to say new, white hatch, and OK. And again, now it's been added to this list. Now, if I change something here, let's say for the, let's go up to here to the dark mark, uh, let's say dark mark hatch. Uh, if I say, oh, I want to cross hatch that, and I hit save when it's, uh, when this is selected, boom, I've now saved these new parameters cross hatch into that uh, dark mark hatch uh, parameter list. Okay, so, um, a couple other things to note on this, again, uh, the pulse width control and the, the again, to go through this again. So I, I can go through, uh, when I'm setting up a laser parameter, I can set up a number of repeats. 
I can set up my speed, my power, my frequency, which rep rate, uh, and then pulse width. Um, another thing to note, I talked a little bit about it before, but I didn't get into it too much. I can go ahead here and under my hatch settings, I can create multiple hatches or multiple fills. So I could have, for instance, um, if I, let's say I'm doing a deep engrave on stainless, and maybe I want my first patch to be a cross hatch, very deep, uh, you know, dense engrave. And when I do that, after I'm done with that, I'm going to go ahead and have a lot of dust on that after that first pass. I can go ahead and do a clean pass. So I could do another fill, for instance. It uses a different pen. Uh, I could use, like, for instance, I could do a heavy engrave, and then I could do the white parameters that I've talked about earlier. I could use pen two, and I know that pen two, uh, because I've been you know, already working in this uh, during the session, I know pen two is set up to give me a kind of a white mark. I could do a heavy engrave and then follow it up with a white mark. Or I could do a heavy engrave and I could do, I could set it up and maybe just do like a, a I call it a clean pass, but what that really means is uh, basically like a polish pass. And it can clean up the dust that's on there that uh, may have been on there from the engraving. The other reason I might want to use multiple fills, and I've talked about it before in other videos, is I may want to do a really, really nice deep mark or a deep engrave on something like a firearm. Well, uh, sometimes when you're using, uh, again, when you're filling, your hatch filling, you're creating lines, or actually it's filling in lines. If I can go ahead and do maybe a cross hatch and then I do another uh, pass, even at the same parameters, I can do a cross hatch or I can say, change my angle. Uh, let's say the first one started at the bottom and 90, if, notice the first fill was at zero uh, angle. It basically means it's starting from the bottom and moving up. Uh, the next pass that I do, let's say I could do a 45. And now when I, uh, my second pass, uh, being applied here would start out from this corner and it would fill across like this in this pattern here is a 45 degrees and because I've cross hatch it it would actually then come back and do it uh, actually do cross hatch it would come off from this angle and do it the other way versus my first one again back to my first one starts at the bottom lines moving across and scanning this way and filling and then when I cross hatch it it comes back and goes up and down cross hatches it and then I can do a second pass and it comes in at a 45 and comes across, and then it cross hatches back across this way. Uh, I could also do a third one. I could add a different angle, let's say 40 degrees or 30 degrees or 180 degrees or whatever, and it would basically would manipulate the laser to move across the image that way. And so effectively, you get kind of uh, the ability to kind of counteract some of the things you might see if you've got machining lines coming in, maybe from the bottom or across. If I cross hatch it and I cross hatch it again in different directions, sometimes you, you can kind of counteract some of those, uh, some of those effects. But you'll, uh, it really depends. On, it's kind of a more advanced topic. It really depends on what you're doing. Um, but a, a kind of a common thing is uh, also uh, we haven't talked about anything with 3D yet. We haven't talked about anything uh, with um, you know like marking on drinkware. But for instance, with drinkware, a lot of times because it's 3D, as you make a pass over it. You definitely often, sometimes you have to make multiple passes to get the laser to really kind of remove all the material or make the mark you want. And coming at it in different directions always helps to fill voids. And then, or coming back and hitting it with different colors or different fills uh, will allow you to tr generate different effects. Again, much more advanced topics, but uh, I just wanted to point that out.